was bin ich sehen? Maga, was ist das? Was, was ist das? Oh, ich sehe gerade, Dan Suzuki hat die reviewed. Hi guys, Dan here, welcome to this video. Och. Und wann ist denn das? Von vor sechs Monaten. Moment, Chat. Wir müssen, mal ganz, wir müssen mal ganz kurz studieren gehen, okay? Der Dentist Chair. Okay. Yo, today we're going to have a look at the SimGrade R7 Finnish Company, a pedal set where I think the engineer that designed it had a lot of fun. Das sieht auf jeden Fall aus, nachdem äh, so als, first of all, as always, thank you very much. als hätte er eine Menge Spaß gehabt. To SimGrade for providing these two pedals for review. SimGrade does not get to see this review before it's posted and all the opinions are my own. So the two pedal set that you can see here is 1089 euros, including taxes. They are built and manufactured in Finland, so I think the price is a little bit on the higher side, but considering where it's made, it's okay. My pedal set that I have here is the advanced brake kit installed or part of it. Uh, that you can buy additionally. So we'll start with build quality. It's overall very good. It's a typical stainless steel laser cut What? pedal set. Whether you like it or not, that's a matter of taste. The edges are not sharp, not uncomfortable to touch or anything. And then we have bearings in all major pivot points, which makes the operation super, super smooth. And honestly, there's not a lot to complain about in terms of build quality. Das sieht halt wirklich original aus, Alter, wie ein Zahnarztstuhl, Mann. The manufacturer claims that these pedals are maintenance free. I obviously tested them for a few weeks and after a few weeks you typically don't need lubrication. Um, but during my testing I've had zero issues with the pedals. Everything's been completely silent, no squeaking or anything. Pretty much perfect. In terms of specs and customizability and everything, this is probably the most crazy pedal set that I have ever reviewed. I mean, just look at this thing. I like to call it the dentist chair because, <laughs> I don't know, it reminds me of a dentist chair. It's definitely a very unique looking design and has a lot of benefits. The idea behind the pedals is to get the perfect ergonomics and basically maximize the comfort you have on the pedals and by doing that to give you the best input accuracy that you can possibly get. I mean, okay. think about it. If your foot is always in the most comfortable position, that will minimize fatigue and will give you the best experience for sim racing. The pedals do feel insanely precise. I mean, you probably know me by that point. I like to run really high inputs, but not so much with these pedals. I felt like I can get similar results or maybe even better by using lower brake pressure, which definitely helps in the long run because you don't get tired after spending hours on track. So if we look at general adjustment points, we have three. <laughs> yeah, du, was wollen, was wollen Sie anpassen? Yeah. Points of contact where the foot is resting on. We have the heel plate, the heel stopper, and the regular pedal plate. This is a little custom design, but we'll talk about that later. And to be honest, when I first put them on the rig, it felt a little bit confusing because if you look at the movement here, you can see on the bottom part here that your heel is, is moving with your foot. It's not the traditional uh, that only this part moves, no, the, the whole foot moves. It's probably a very nice pedal set if you have some issues with ankles or something. I mean, I don't, but um, it's very, very unique. It's confusing at first, but it's insanely comfortable to use. If you like to use them as a more traditional pedal set, you can always move this part further to the back so that your heel will not touch it and then it feels more like a normal pedal set, even though the heel Uh, plate still moves, but it das ist halt richtig wild, dass sich da wirklich alles bewegt. Feels more conventional Kann ich like mir gerade gar nicht vorstellen. The cool thing about this design is when your foot sits on it, typically when you, when you move it, you have some friction between the rubber of your sole and the pedal plate. And since you don't get any movement of the foot here, uh, you don't have that. And the input feels way more precise than conventional pedals. I mean, the adjustability is just crazy. You can move this up, down, uh, backwards, forwards. You can adjust the angle. Same for the pedal plate. And the downside is it will take more time to adjust. And the adjustment of these, you need to loosen these, these two screws and then adjust it, tighten it. It can be a little bit annoying, to be honest. It took me some hours to get to my perfect position, but it's definitely worth it. Because once you have set these up to your liking, It's just the most comfortable pedal set that I have tested so far. In general, the angle of the whole pedal can be adjusted in four positions here with, by using these four holes. So I would start to adjust the, the overall angle and then do the fine tuning on the pedal plate and the heel stopper. The pedal plates itself look very nice. As I said, this is a custom one. It typically comes with these. 
Um, but I reached out to Timo from SimGrade and told him of one issue that I was having. Like my foot sometimes is slightly angled on the pedal and it's a bad habit that you should not do if you can. But ich fühle mich nicht angesprochen. Nee, 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 nee. I was having the problem due to my heel resting on the heel plate that my foot was a little bit too much to the right. Yeah. <laughs> And I used to slip off the pedal. So I reached out and asked if there's a possibility to do something against this. And I got this. This will be available in the shop for sale, but not at this point of filming the review. But yeah, if you don't do weird angles of your foot, you should be perfectly fine with these. And like I said, it's a bad habit of mine. And it's definitely not good for your body to get used to something like this. But Yeah. Ich bremse seit drei Jahren schräg in meine Bremse. Uh, this helps. If you don't like the look of these, you can also use the pedal plates of the Simgrade Terra. There's a little adapter that just comes in here. Okay, if we have a closer look at the throttle pedal, I mean both pedals have a similar look to it and similar adjustments, but we'll start uh, with the throttle. We have the load cell in the bottom here and there is a little spring that does not push the load cell, it pulls on the load cell, but it's the same principle um, and that signal goes to the electronics box. Electronics, by the way, are exactly the same as on the Terra pedal set, so I'm not gonna show that again. If you wanna, if you wanna see them, check my Terra review. The resistance for the throttle pedal is done via the spring that you compress, and you can super easily adjust the preload with these two nuts here. There's one steel nut and one Sehr gut. plastic nut, which you can like easily adjust and then tighten it with the other nut to lock it in place done and I have it to a very low setting right now because it's easier to move the pedal with your hands then uh, but you can super easily adjust the resistance by just moving this rod end on the pedal you can see it here I can just move it up and now the resistance is much higher oh, everyone oh das ist richtig geil dass man das nicht schrauben muss sondern einfach bewegen kann we'll find a position that suits their needs because you can go from super light to like forces that you definitely don't want on a throttle pedal because it can get so stiff. Everybody will find a nice setting. Okay, then on the back, we also have this little rod here. It is just a mechanical end stop. So if you want less travel, just loosen this bolt, move it up higher, and then your end stop is there. And to make it silent, there's a little felt pad. And honestly, this, I think, is maybe the only thing that feels a little bit cheap on these pedals. It's like a self-adhesive felt pad. But it's fine. It's, it does the job and it's super easy to replace if it ever gets worn out. I mean, I've been using these pedals for a few weeks now and it looks pretty much like new. All right, next pedal, the brake. And this features a proper two-stage system, even though they don't really actively advertise it. But when you first see this pedal, you probably be like... Das, es sieht aus wie ein Alien irgendwie, so Alien vs. Predator kommt mir da einfach sofort in den Sinn. Das, es sieht nicht aus wie ein Pedal. Ich habe auch am Anfang gedacht, als ich das erste Mal gesehen habe, das ist so, er geht mehr in die Richtung äh, Flugsimulator. Like, what the hell is going on? This looks crazy and yeah, I agree. And this isn't even everything. You can also add this module here, if you want to go to even crazier pedal forces. SimGrade uses the standard 200 kilogram load cell here, which leads to a pedal pressure on the plate at up to 100 kilograms. And if you want to go higher than that, you need this little add-on. It's coming with the advanced brake performance kit or whatever they will call it. Okay. As of the time filming this review, it's not yet in the shop, but I'll add the link in the description as soon as it's released. So if you want to adjust the pedal force or better the pedal travel, I mean, a load cell always measures the force you put on the pedal plate and what you pretty much adjust is the travel that corresponds to this force and then you do the rest in the software. To do it on traditional pedals, what you typically do is like put in soft or medium or hard elastomers. And here what you do is... Done. The leverage... Was? Wie geil ist das denn? Nix auseinanderbauen? Wow, das ist richtig gut. Angle of this elastomer pushrod thing basically determines how much travel you get at a certain force. For example, if I put it to a very low setting here, then I might need, like, if I push this with 20 kilograms, then I might get, let's say, two centimeters of travel. And if I push this higher, 
then with the same 20 kilograms, I still get the same output in the software, but maybe I only get like five millimeters of travel. And with this options, there are so many settings here. It's everybody will find something. There's also like one problem that you will see if you use really high angles. You need some room behind the pedals. If you put it on a flat surface, I had the. Das ist bei uh, Azitec auch so, weil der uh, Hydraulikzylinder so weit rüber hängt. Problem first that I thought, why is there some weird end stop? That was because I was hitting my my pedal plate with this. Yeah. So be sure if you use something like that, there needs to be some space behind the pedals to allow for the movement of the whole thing. So yeah, insanely easy to adjust the force to travel ratio. You can also adjust the preload with these two two nuts here. There's one like loosen the first, then you can adjust the preload and then tighten it with the other one. Very easy. And then this also comes with the two-stage braking. There are basically two ways how to achieve it. First of all, there can be washers inside the elastomere that will limit the compression of the elastomere. So once it's compressed to a certain point, uh -huh. you will basically compress the washers and you will not be able to compress those. So this will come to a hard stop. And a second way is the mechanical end stop, like on the throttle. But this does limit the travel of the pedal arm. It does not limit the output. So if you hit the end stop... Ooh, das ist quasi... Das ist ja quasi jetzt Asitec und... Ich sag jetzt einfach Häusingwelt zusammen in eins gemacht und du kannst dir aussuchen, was du machen möchtest. Also das ist wirklich krass, dass du so viele Möglichkeiten hast mit den Pedalen. Das ist wirklich krass. Stop, minus setup, so that it's at about 80% of output. Very helpful for iRacing, because especially with ABS cars, you want to be around 70, 80% output. And then I can feel where it hits the end stop, but I still get inputs after that, because it's not limiting the load onto the load cell, it's just limiting the travel. I mean, if you really look at it, there will always be a tiny bit of travel, because without travel, no measurement on the load cell, but it's pretty much a mechanical end stop. You get some options to fine-tune the elastomere stack. It comes default with four 15 mm elastomeres. And you can also add shorter ones. These are 10 mm options. You can mix and match. You can put in washers. If you want to, you don't have to. I find it schön, dass es durchsichtiger sind. Das finde ich macht optisch was her. They're actually really, really soft if you look at that. Uh, compared to other elastomeres. They also give you an option to put in a steel spring instead of the elastomeres. The advantage is the return phase of the pedal is quicker. So the elastomeres are a little bit slower to go to the 0% position. Uh, but with the spring, I felt like the initial phase of the force to travel ratio is, uh, I don't know, I prefer the elastomeres. I really like the default configuration it comes with. I tried the other ones, but This combined with this module here we'll talk about later um, is my preferred choice here. And then what you see on the back here is the additional, how do they call it? The additional preload spring. What it will do is oh, it lets you fine tune the preload onto the whole thing a little bit better. I, I would show you, but I can't move this thing with my hands. But it's pretty much, here's the elastomere stack. And then here is the preload spring. So I think of it as an easier really way good. to adjust the preload. What I like from the metal spring is how the pedal returns to the zero position. And if you add this together with the elastomere stack, I think you get the best of both worlds because the spring here will make sure that it will return to the position like a spring does, but you still get the brake feel of the elastomere. So I think this is a very clever design and I really like this. And then there's the load limiter that would mount approximately like this here. And now you can see you really need space behind the pedal because otherwise, well, there's just no room. Um, and what this is doing, it pretty much counters the load you put on the load cell with your foot. And in the end, that's a complicated way to say, you can push the pedal harder if you want to. <laughs> mm. But the 100 kilograms it can do without it, I think is more than good enough. I typically use 120, 130 kilograms on my VRS pedals, but on these pedals I run way lower brake pressure without like sacrificing performance. It's way more comfortable. I feel like I'm more in control of the inputs and I feel there's no need for this thing, um, but I do like... Dan, also Dan ist glaube ich... Dan, falls du das irgendwann mal hören solltest, du bist ein richtiges Lieberbild. 
Alter, wenn du dir da seine Oberschenkel anguckst, glaube ich, hast du da solche Apparate. Maga, wenn, also jetzt wirklich, wenn du dir diesen Menschen anguckst, erwartest du nicht wirklich viel. Also, du, du bist jetzt nicht so, okay, krasser sportlicher Typ oder, ne, also ihr wisst, was ich meine. Er sieht halt aus wie, aber 120 Kilo in eine VHS rein, äh, reinschmettern. Ich weiß nicht, ob das jemand mal von euch probiert hat. Das ist äh, sehr sportlich. This additional preload spring. Okay, I'll show you the software and then we go for a short drive, but I'll hop into the rig for that. Okay, so here we are. This is the SimGrade pedal tuning utility software. Um, one thing I noticed that you can probably see is the electronics of these pedals are a little bit more susceptible to like uh, EMI noise or, or ground noise on the ground, basically. I typically have my rig grounded and then this is not an issue at all. If you see something similar like this, what I can recommend is like connect a grounding wire from your rig to the screw that goes into your PSU on, on your PC. That typically helps with most of these issues. But I removed this wire because I want to show you the filterings. But still, there are pedals that will not see any noise. These ones do. Some do, some don't. Um, but it's but sim racing rigs can really be a pain with the noise with these crazy big direct drive motors. Um, it's not unusual, just like if you have these issues, run a grounding wire. So what we see here is the calibration. I really wouldn't call it calibration because it's all manual and a little bit not too user friendly to be honest okay what you see here on the left side is the raw reading of the sensor on the right side what the pedal software will uh, output to the game so you can see we have two lines here that we can move um, if i move this up then obviously we don't reach this so it will oh, only okay. output 38 so you move this slightly below what you see at the maximum value here You want to have like a little dead zone. There's no dead zone adjustment as in I want 5% dead zone. You adjust the dead zone pretty much with this. So this could be like 10, 15% dead zone. This would be a negative dead zone. Don't do that on the throttle. I wish. <lacht> Habe ich übrigens auch schon mal gemacht, Chat. <lacht> aus Versehen. Ich wollte bei meiner Bremse eine einbauen. Habe es dann aus Versehen auf dem Gaspedal gemacht. Hm. This was a little bit more comfortable to configure. I would love to see an automatic calibration where it tells you, hey, move the pedal up, down, bam, these are your raw values for minimum and maximum, and now adjust the uh, dead zone. This can be a little bit inaccurate, especially on the brake. I would love to see a more precise adjustment of that. And then on the brake, we can see the noise that I have on my rig. And if I remove these filters here, You can see it's pretty bad on the output value as well. But if you have issues like this, what you can use is these filter settings that will smoothen out the response of the pedal, whether it's for the clutch, brake or throttle. So if we enable filter 2, you can see the raw value is still... I think I had that already. I had that already with the VHS pedal. Noisy, but the value that is being outputted is way better. If I run the grounding wire, I don't need the filtering, then it's fine. But for now, we'll go with the filter too, to smoothen it out a little bit. And then, same issue here, the calibration and the dead zone adjustment is in one. So, I typically like to run a really, really small dead zone on the brake, but it's kind of hard to achieve this here. I wish we could get like a separate dead zone adjustment and raw value mapping to game output. Okay, then you probably can't really see it, but this is the point where I hit the mechanical end stop that I talked about earlier. You can see it maybe like slightly in the pedal cam. That's right, wirklich good for eye racing, weil dann kannst du, kannst du nicht mehr Panik bremsen. Um, so it's at about 74%. If I want more, I would lower this value a little bit. I want, I want it to be at around 80%, because that is like the sweet spot on, on eye racing most cars where you uh, will not engage the ABS. And even though we are at the mechanical end... Ist das eigentlich jetzt mal wirklich eine ernst gemeinte Frage, Leute? Ist das wie Cheaten eigentlich? Das frage ich mich schon die ganze Zeit, ob das wie Cheaten ist. Oder machen die das im realen Leben auch? Das machen die doch im realen Leben nicht, oder? Dass sie sagen, so hier ist Endstop, da ist keine ABS mehr? So here you see the, the rest of the movement is definitely smaller than before. So we can still increase the sensor value. As you can see, we are at like 2,700 raw now. I think that's, I don't want to push it too hard. But yeah, I like to adjust it at around 80% on the mechanical end stop. And then I can still modulate beyond that. Just don't get that much pedal movement anymore. 
So this is the two-stage system we see here. Then uh, second page, shaping. You can go absolutely crazy with that. There are tons of points. You can make the craziest uh, pedal curves. Let's see if that actually works. We'll assign profile one to throttle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you can do that if you want to. Um, I typically have just the linear output, prefer that. Uh, wahrscheinlich, weil ein Seed Mover unten drunter ist, uh, checkert ihr gerade nicht alles. Um, on both the throttle and the brake, but you can go absolutely nuts here. There are several presets. This is interesting, inverted throttle. And then there are three profiles and you can assign these profiles to uh, the three pedals. What some people like to do on the brake is limit the maximum output. So what you want to do for that is create a profile, assign that to the brake. Make sure to calibrate the brake first in the game. And then afterwards, let's say you don't want the brake to have more than 80% output, what you can do is like something like this. And it will max out at around 83 or so, or 80 actually. I don't recommend doing that with high-end pedals like that, that give you more than enough pedal force. But if you want to, that's how you do it. Okay, but let's hop into the game. All right, we are in the Porsche Cup around Hockenheim. I chose the Porsche Cup because I think it's one of the cars where Good pedals can make the biggest difference because it's super hard on the corner exit acceleration and it's also hard on mm. the braking because no ABS, no traction control. So I think this is a good test subject, but we'll just go on the track now. Okay, now you can already see what I was talking about in the review all the time. Your foot that's pretty really much good. remains in one position and the only movement you have is is basically at, at the ankle i don't know i'm <laughs> i find it hard to describe because it's very unique and it's very very comfortable you can see i use a lot of throw on the pedal right now i actually moved that end stop to the very last position for filming that wirklich aus wie ein alien irgendwie the review and then forgot to to readjust it when I put them back on the rig. But I typically run this at, I would say, maybe 50% of travel because this is really a crazy amount of travel that you can get. But if you like that, well, good for you. With these pedals, you can do it. Then the resistance I run, I would say, at maybe slightly less than 50% that is possible. These pedals can go absolutely crazy in terms of resistance the throttle pedal gives you. This setting here I use right now, less than 50%, is still stiffer than the VRS pedals, for example. Alter, das war aber richtig snappy gerade auf dem Gaspedal. What the fuck? At the strongest position. I uh, really like this. I feel it gives you a better control. Ah, das war, glaube ich, geschnitten, oder? Control on corner exit. And you're less likely to thunderfoot out of the corners. Nee. But yeah, uh, throttle feels very good. And then on the brake, wait, let me remove my throttle pedal. My throttle pedal, my throttle foot. Uh, you can see the, the mechanical end stop here and then I can still push beyond that. We need to roll a little bit so we can see something on the telemetry. But yeah, same principle applies. Your foot pretty much stays in one position. You just push with your leg and it's very, very comfortable. And then you can still modulate a little bit. Like, my braking technique with these pedals is like I push with my leg to roughly like 60-70% and then I can modulate even more with the with the regular pedal plate. And it is something that takes you a few hours to get used to. But once you got the hang out of it, I feel like you can be more precise on the inputs. Um, this surely is not for everyone. Because... Da fällt mir gerade ein, das kann man mit der vrs pedale auch machen. Das kannst du mit der VHS-Pedale auch machen. Weil du hast hier oben, <lacht> du hast hier die, äh, den Endstop und den könntest du einfach bis hier hoch machen. Und dann, wenn du hier oben, also wenn du am Endstop angekommen bist, bist du bei 80 Prozent. Und dann kannst du ja, okay, das ist eh, kannst du vergessen, die sind so hart eingestellt. Aber dann kannst du bis zum Endstop machen und dann hast du noch mehr äh, Weg. Also dann kannst du, dann, dann äh, wird die Lotzelle halt getriggert. What? Das fällt mir ja jetzt gerade erst ein, dass man das theoretisch machen kann. Huh. Ich glaube, wir müssen das uh, demnächst nochmal ausprobieren. Okay. They feel different than basically any other pedal sets. 
Um, but if you really give it a chance and use it for a few hours, maybe a few days, I think you do not want to go back to the regular position where your foot is, is more like this. I mean, now this sti it's still like the heel plate is moving, but this feels more like a conventional way to do it. But yeah, get used to this. I feel, I think it feels amazing. And apart from that, it's a very good pedal set. I've had zero issues with it. No squeaking, no nothing. The only issue I had was that my foot, I would have my foot basically like this. Das habe ich auch und das regt mich auf und ich bremse schräg rein. And then I would slip off the pedal plate quickly because, well, to exaggerate it a bit, I had my foot like this probably. And that's so bremse ich übrigens. <laughs> that's not good. Don't don't do that. Don't get used to it. And this end stop here does the job. And I can get rid of my bad habit of having my foot at a weird angle like this. Man fragt sich halt auch immer, warum nach einem Endurance-Rennen der Arsch so weh tut, ja. <lacht> Eventuell deswegen. Holy shit, the sun here. Um, but yeah, that, there's not really a lot to say, because when you have no problem with pedals, that's a very good sign. And if and typically you will talk about things that you feel like are not done very well, like I can't think of anything here. The only thing is like it takes some time to get used to, but once you adapt it to the new feel of pedals they are just amazing to use they are super smooth you can i think you can with this with this method of how your foot applies the pressure you can be more precise and yeah i'm very very happy with these pedals and i can highly recommend them to anyone braking also to me, it helps a lot to have this end stop and then still be able to go beyond that and the adjustability of this end stop. I think like there are so many possibilities to adjust these pedals to your liking. If you just spend the time to get there, everybody will find a setting that works very, very well for them. Okay. Ich meine, du hast halt wirklich, ohne Scheiß, du hast, ich glaube, jetzt mal wirklich, wir nehmen mal die Simocube-Pedale, packen wir mal ganz kurz weg, ja, weil Simocube ist, das ist ein anderes Level, aber auch ergonomisch ist ja Simocube anpassbar, hm, naja, lass, wir lassen sie mal raus, wir, wir lassen sie mal raus. Also für 1000 Flöten, für zwei Pedale hast du hier wirklich die meisten Einstellungsmöglichkeiten, die ich persönlich jemals gesehen habe, von Haus aus. Das ist richtig krass. Also ich habe echt schon viele Pedale gesehen, aber ich habe noch nie welche gesehen, wo man so viel einstellen kann. Also VHS kannst du wirklich viel einstellen. Bei den Sprints kannst du wirklich sehr viel einstellen. Bei Asitec nicht so viel. Man kann was einstellen, aber nicht so viel. Das ist wirklich insane. Trailing off the break, also very, very smooth. Always in control. Also sensitive to the small inputs. I don't like to run high dead zones. That's why I criticize the software because I feel like it should be a little bit more granular to adjust. Like I just want more control over the configuration there. Um, but still, I think I put the slider to the right position. In theory, you can hack a little bit by editing the profile. You can export your profile, then edit it with a hex editor and then open it again. That way you have more precision, but come on, I don't want to feel like a hacker man in order to co <laughs> properly configure the pedals. But Nicht? I'm sure that can be adjusted with the future software updates, so yeah. But what I wanted to say is the little inputs are there. I like, this is like barely touching the pedal and I get 5 to 10 percent of inputs. Das, ist, uh, das mag ich beispielsweise überhaupt gar nicht. Ich habe meine, meine sind komplett... Uh um, some people Tot like to run dead crazy dead zones on the break. I don't know how people can properly modulate. Dan, ich fühle mich angesprochen. Ich guck, gleich, ich guck gleich mal. I personally ich can't. Um, but it's not an issue with these pedals. Some pedals are a little bit not sensitive enough at this position. Um, but absolutely zero issue with these pedals. And yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm a big fan. They perform very, very well. But yeah, that's it from the track. Let's go into the pits and then we'll go to the verdict. Okay, so to sum it up, 
I think there's pretty much... They are so unique, there's pretty much no competition for these pedals. I can't think okay. of another pedal set that is doing such crazy things like mm -hmm. this one and is so adjustable and, and the whole movement of the whole... Zimbo Cube. ...whole foot, it's, it's very unique and ergonomically... Also, pass auf, Zimbo Cube kann man einstellen, aber ich würde immer behaupten, Zimbo Cube kann man ergonomisch nicht so sehr einstellen. Ich glaube, darauf kann man sich einigen. I can't think of another pedal set that feels as nice as these. In my SimGrade Terra review, I said the Terra are the perfect pedals for people that just want to put them on the rig, forget about it, and then just use them. And I think this is pretty much the opposite. So SimGrade has like two pedal sets that are on the very extreme. Like either basically no configurability. Ja, da kann, <coughs> davon mal abgesehen, also ich weiß, dass äh, zu dem Zeitpunkt die SimoCube nicht draußen waren. Das würde jetzt nichts ändern, dass die SimoCube ergonomisch auch damit nicht mithalten können. Also einstellbar via, also für Endstop und für das ganze Feel etc. pp. kannst du bei SimoCube wirklich aktuell das meiste einstellen. Aber ergonomisch ist das hier wirklich das krasseste, was geht, glaube ich. Das ist richtig insane. Or this. <lacht> If I had to pick one of the two, I would pick the R7. Because once you have spent the time and adjusted it to your liking, I'm just repeating myself here, but this is so comfortable to use, honestly. It feels weird when you first try them because you're not used to the movement of the foot, but I think it's worth it. Try using this stopper here and try to really go with what SimGrade think is the best way to use these pedals. I mean, of course, you can just move this to the back and then use them more like a traditional pedal, but give it a chance. Especially on the throttle, you know, these situations where you have to lift your foot off to get not any inputs when you're braking, for example, and this is just not the case with these pedals. Your foot is always just in that position and it's comfortable. Jetzt stell dir mal vor, du würdest SimoCube mit den SimGray Pedals, äh, die machen ein Baby und dann hast du die Ergonomie von diesen Pedalen und die Einstellungsmöglichkeiten von SimoCube. Maga, du stehst nie wieder in deinem Leben aus dem Rig auf. Never ever. Oh. In terms of looks, I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, they are definitely prettier pedals than this, I think. It, they, they look a little bit strange compared to other pedal sets. But yeah, this is how they look. Um, ich finde das mittlerweile, also so nach 26 Minuten Review, finde ich sie schön. Und ich bin auch ein bisschen verliebt. Everybody has their own opinion on that. And yeah, as you can probably tell, I can absolutely recommend this pedal set. It's the most ergonomic pedal set that I have tested so far. Give it a chance. Spend the time to adjust it to your liking. Don't be like, okay, this is the default config or this is what person X, Y uses. I'll just copy that. Spend the time, see what works best for you. I'm sure you will find a position and setting that works perfectly fine for you. It surely is not for everyone because they do feel a little bit different than other pedal sets. Um, but I can only say, give it a chance if you can. They are great pedals. If you have any questions, feel free to just leave a comment down below or join the community Discord to chat. Um, I also stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Wednesday and Fridays. Maybe you want to follow the channel, say hi. And Sehr gerne. If das macht ihr jetzt übrigens auch. Like the video, maybe give it a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss any future videos. But that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye. Also bei Dan, ne, so innerlich jedes Mal, wenn ich das sehe, wenn ich Dan sehe, und mir seine Reviews von früher angucke, ist echt viel passiert in einem Jahr oder also nee, in den drei Jahren, in denen ich jetzt Dan gucke, ist wirklich so viel passiert und ich wünsche keinem anderen Content Creator aus dem Sim Racing Bereich, dass der einfach alles, was es an Sim Racing Hardware zugeschickt kriegt, dass der dir, der das, äh, dass er das vorstellt. Sein neues Büro, also ich, ich glaube, Dan ist irgendwann zwischendurch mal umgezogen, sein neues Büro ist wirklich so schön. Also gerade so mit der Wand hinten, die Farbe, äh, also die Wandfarbe, dass sie die ganzen Lenkräder da äh, hat und, und der ganze Hintergrund, dass er einen eigenen Tisch hat fürs Reviewen, also wo du wirklich nur ihn und das Produkt siehst, so, das ist richtig schön geworden. Und ich möchte nicht wissen, wirklich nicht, was für ein riesiges Lager Dan hat. Also ich vermute mal wirklich, dass er seinen Freunden oder... Äh, Kumpels, also Menschen, denen er nachsteht, ein paar Sachen abgibt, weil der hat so viel Shit, Alter. Das ist einfach insane, wie viel Stuff der hat. Wenn du nur mal guckst, wie viel paar, paar äh, Pedale er im Haus hat, durch die ganzen Reviews, das ist richtig krass. Der ist wirklich, also ich kann euch das auch immer nur wärmstens empfehlen, Leute. Äh, folgt Dan, 
überall, wo ihr könnt. Es ist ein englischsprachiger Creator, der ist super hilfsbereit. Ich persönlich lerne sehr, sehr viel von Dan. Also gerade was so Software angeht, der kennt da sehr viele Tricks und Quirks und macht dazu auch sehr hilfreiche Videos. Ähm, und ihr des Englischen mächtig seid, dann schaut definitiv mal bei Dan vorbei. Kann ich euch nur wärmstens empfehlen. Ist voller Bursche. 